Let's raise money for that project. Yeah. Okay, everybody's telling me I'm on, so I'm on. You said 545, though. Yeah, no. Oh, so it's like nine minutes. I should keep people busy company, though. Oh, definitely keep you company. Yeah, I'll keep you company, guys, for the next nine minutes while we let everybody come on. I'll... I don't want to give the story away because everybody probably wants to hear it. So let's talk about wine. A um, couple things on my mind. Eight minute rant. Why don't we do that? Um, I'm just checking. It's working. Okay. Eight minute rant. 2005 Bordeaux. I'm going to start with that because that's imperatively important to me. I think that, uh, you know, let me tell you why I'm probably so gun ho about the 05s. I made a pretty grave mistake when the 2000 vintage Bordeaux came out. Um, I told everybody um, not to buy them, all my major customers. And uh, that was a mistake, as obviously the wines turned out to be very solid. And I knew they were going to be great, but they were expensive compared to what Bordeaux used to be like. And so that kind of was a struggle for me and for the market and for a lot of people. Well, obviously here we are, you know, five vintages later in the 2000s pricing when they came out seemed like uh, absolute steals. And so what's really interesting about that is the demand in China and Russia and other parts of the world are really, really um, having a major impact on supply and not allowing um, the American market to get as much wine as we'd like. And so that's a huge factor in why there's such a huge demand. Plus, great Bordeaux is great Bordeaux. They can't buy any more vineyards. Latour makes what it makes. Mouton makes what it makes. And that's it. It's just one of those things. And so obviously that is... Uh, a huge factor in supply and demand, but the quality is extraordinary, and please understand this more than anything else. This is now reality. The 06, which is not a, going to be as great a vintage, I know I'm not going to be buying anywhere close or as heavy as I did, um, they, are, uh, they are not as good, the wines. They will be less expensive than the 05s, but not much more less. And so that's a huge factor knowing what's going to happen 07s, 08s, 09s. These wines are only going to get more. It's a real correction in the Bordeaux market and uh, and that's basically the uh, situation with uh, Bordeaux. So we've got about seven minutes. I'm going to check the comments right now and see uh, how many people are in and seeing it. Comments are exploding because a lot of people are Holy Shervington, it's working. No audio for this one. It's really dark for this one. Eric, please turn up the brightness. Damn. Hey, the video is working, but I didn't get my hey, audio. You have six minutes. It's plugging in. What is there? Which one? We don't have the light here anymore. I think it's we took it. Oh, yeah? Great. Let's get it. Kahuna's obviously in the house. Welcome, Kahuna. No chat, Brandon M. I'll go into all that. I'm just going to tell people on the phone to go to W. There. WLTV and just post comments along yeah. the way. I don't think that's going to bring that much to them. You know, they're going to want live chat. And we're going to work on that. We'll explain it to them later. And then it's um, it's really you know interesting going live. It's a real um, pisser, as they say in the streets of Jersey. So, so we went a little bit lighter. Let's see if that does anything. I'm going to try to check that out. Um, yeah, totally help. We give a big shadow, but it's helping. The shadow we'll deal with. Right, here goes my shadow. So I'm going to probably go live a little bit sooner. And so um, that's what we're going to do. I see. Yeah, it got lighter, much lighter. But um, let's see the comments. I don't want to start before I said. Should we just start before I said? I mean, it's going to be another five minutes. I don't think all these people want to just sit here for five minutes. John? Um. Yeah, I think they go for it. All right. A couple people are just posting now. It's like two minutes from now. Yep. Hopefully you're in. We're going to go. We're going to start in about two, two minutes. So, you know. Recording on both levels, right? We've already got seven minutes here.
What an interesting day. Okay, I'm gonna get geared up. Ready, John? Ready? Hold on, I'm just gonna check the comments one more time, make sure and see if more people are coming in. Interesting. Much better. Thank you, guys. Grackle, best Jets defensive player of all time is Lance Mel, and you know it's true. Tampa Steve sucks. I agree, Brandon M. Brandon M sucks. I agree, Tampa Steve. <laughs> all right. Can you thank Brandon for me? Shadow puppets. That's a great idea. Thank Brandon for me. You did what I needed. Brandon M. Eric says thank you for doing what he needed. Perfect the light, although it looks like you're about to get me. That's true. GB, Pat's playoff beard, nice try. Not so quite much. That's love. All right, I think we're ready. It's going to be fun. Um, before I actually make it official, I'll just tell you guys. I'm probably going to look at the comment section so we can do a little act, act, interactive afterwards. So at the end, but I'll save that for you. All right, let's go. Ready? And should I do what I normally do? My push-ups? to Wine Library TV Live, kind of, sort of, maybe, yikes. I want to thank, <laughs> I want to apologize to everybody who got here at 4.30 Eastern Time and witnessed the disaster of all time. It's, uh, it's obviously quite uh, sad and shocking and, you know, we did some prep work yesterday. We tried to do all the right things, but the amount of traffic was just too much. What really ended up happening is we had a chat client. So as you're watching this, you're gonna be able to interact with me um, on the chat board, 45 second delay or so. But unfortunately, that did not work out. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who's watching right now. I can see there's probably a good amount of people on and that means a lot to me. Um, this has been a very interesting day. We went a lot, we try, you know, we weren't that organized. We got here like three minutes before uh, we were supposed to go live. That might have been a mistake. And, uh, and so that's that. So let me explain. We really wanted to have a chat board underneath here so you could interact with me. Unfortunately, we don't have that now, but hopefully for our second try, um, we will have that. You know, obviously, when I talked to Steve about, you know, going live with the video and the Victoria's Secrets people, you know, they warned me this might happen, and, and it happened, you know. So uh, we apologize. I thank you. This means a lot. I actually have a tasting tonight that I'm gonna have to like speed through New York City to get to, but I didn't wanna give up because obviously, as many of you know, I am going away on vacation. <sighs> we have wine here on Wine Library TV Live. And the uh, two wines we're gonna be talking about today are both Cabernet-based wines from California. Both scored 95 points Robert Parker. We have a 95 point Robert Parker California Cabernet battle going on now. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. The first wine is the Philip Cogney 2004 Estate Bottled Cabernet. 95 points from Robert Parker, 89 US dollars for the economy of America. So let's give this a whirl. These wines have been able to now breathe nice and long and uh, that's quite interesting. I'm going to refresh. Now, like I said, I'm going to try to uh, shoot along with you guys as this breathes in the glass a little bit. In the comments section, please interact. I mean, it's nowhere as cool as the way we had the chat set up, so it's kind of bobo. But if you want to do it, it'd mean a lot. I can answer questions along the way. I'm going to really try. It could be a little hard. Maybe save it for the end. But uh, Kahuna, I know I'm no Victoria's Secrets model, but uh, I appreciate it. So uh, here it is. Gray color from the... Uh, Philip Togni, and that's what you expect. It's a 95-point Cabernet. Philip Togni is amazing. We did 03 Philip Togni on Wine Library TV, which was uh, one of the big hits, and so I'm excited about trying this. I thought I'd go with some really great wine to send me off on my vacation. Thank you guys for, uh, for watching, and, and it didn't work out exactly that way. And as a matter of fact, you guys deserve something. Eric, what do you think? John? You guys deserve something. Even though I give you 170 episodes for free, I mean, that is kind of something. All my time and effort and blood and sweat and tears. But I'm still gonna give you something for free and here's what it is. Anybody watching, obviously live, or the tape version that's going to go on a little bit later when we leave, this weekend only expires at midnight, Eastern Standard Time, 
I know. We're good with the Eastern Standard Time stuff. Anyway, expires at midnight, Eastern Standard Time. Free shipping for you guys on any wine that's ever been on Wine Library TV. Use the code word in the coupon section. Let's use CRASH. C-R-A-S-H. Because Wine Library crashed today. So, I hope that makes up for it a little bit. What do you mean by tits or what day? I didn't say what day. See, I'm a little bit spooked by the whole crashing. Sunday! I said this weekend only. Sunday, midnight, and it's over. But all weekend, go through all the old episodes, pick out the wines you like, free shipping for you, a little token for my appreciation and for my embarrassment for what's going on. All right, now it's been swirling, here we go. And now we're back to what I like to do. I mean, talk about perfume and a little bit of dark oak coming through on this really nice, real interesting vanilla covered strawberries, not chocolate, vanilla covered strawberries on this. And that comes across real elegant, real nice, really interesting. And uh, let's get into it. Huge explosion on the palate. Great mid palate. People are already cheering the crash shipping code on Wine Library TV, so this is pretty cool. Chat room is coming next time. It would be amazing. Huge mid palate. Let me get into it again. I got a little sidetracked. It's tough to spit this one. Huge mid palate. Great structure of dark licorice, cherry, cedar box, hints of tobacco. Lively asparagus coming through a little bit on the finish, which is really nice, but a wave, and I mean a tidal wave, of like blueberry juice with so much sugar in it, you didn't know what to do with yourself. Don't get it twisted. This is a very dry wine, but this has so much fruit and so much complexity on it that I'm completely blown away by the extraction of fruit in this wine. Nice structure. Show of hands in the comments, who's ever had a Philip Togni? This wine rocks. This may be even better than the 04 to me. Drinking amazingly right now. If you're a Cabernet fan of the big dogs, Colgin, Harlan, Bryant, you know, all those Colt wines these days, Caps Candy, all those things, um, you need to seriously, oh man, the vanilla now is coming through again. This finish goes on for at least a minute or two easily. I am blown away by the complexity of this wine. Uh, let's score this wine 96 plus. This is a home run Cabernet. If you have not had a Togni, you are missing out. Nice. Let's move on. And I've been dry, dying, dying, dying to try this. This is the Vineyard 29 IATA 2002, which is uh, a Napa Red uh, and one of the real, real Colt wines in all of Cal California. This is $105, and um, this is also scored 95 points by Robert Parker. And this is a blend. This is a blend of 61% Cabernet and 39% Merlot. So made in the classic, uh, you know, Bordeaux blend varietals. This is made by Philippe Melka, who we've had on Wine Library TV. If you've never seen that episode, search Melka, M-E-L-K-A, above me, not in the screen you're watching right now, but when you're in a normal Wine Library TV. And, um, and uh, check him out. He's an amazing winemaker. So uh, really excited about this. Only 650 cases produced of this wine. Very limited. Usually mailing list only. Basically, I had to rob and steal and pilferage to, you know, get this wine. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. 15.5 alcohol on this red wine. And boy, does the nose come with the thunder. Wow. Chuck McMinn, the owner of... Uh, this wonderful winery is a former former Jersey boy, so it's always good to see the Jersey boys uh, do good things. And this nose is coming really, really at you. A tidal wave of orange peel mixed with bright, bright raspberry, hints of dark chocolate, and even like a mocha coming through on the nose. The nose is really fabulous, really getting into my nose. I feel like pouring it into my nose. I mean, it smells so delicious. It almost sm smells also like a beautiful whipped cream. 
cream smell coming through, like real fresh, real whipped cream. Kind of getting that on the nose as well, which is really nice. Again, one hundred and five dollars ninety five Parker. monster 18 months in French oak and you can taste it um, coming through definitely seriously on this wine and you know what uh, the the flavor profile really takes a little bit of a turn I mean the oak is really really dominating this wine and that's unfortunate because I think there's a lot of great flavors coming through and I think the oak, oak overdid it a little bit that's bothering me a little bit I hope it blows over a little bit with age Great firm tannins, great, and I mean great integration of the fruit outside of the oak into the overall tannin structure and complexity. John Kay, put a little label, uh, put a little link for labels.winelibrary.com. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But uh, this wine is massive, very rich, very over the top, um, an extremely well-made wine. The oak is bothering me. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Had this wine not gone a little overboard on the oak, I think it has 98 point potential. Which makes me also say, in due time, because this is an O2, if that subsides like it does with wines age a little bit, this wine has potential 98 points written all over it. And that's pretty damn cool to me. Um, I'm going to score this wine 95 points right now. I think the Togni has more structure and complexity and is a better wine at this point. Obviously we're scoring it as it is today. but. These two California wines, and, and there's so much hoopla around Camus and around Silver Oak, and then going into the Colgens, Harlins, Arroyos, you know, Prides. These are two that are a little bit more under the radar, a little bit more available, and a little bit more price oriented, though they're very expensive bottle wines, for you to seek out if you want to know what's the best that California can answer and bring to the table. So the live episode didn't go off exactly the way we wanted to. Uh, John K just posted a uh, link to wine labels. We're super excited about it. Please check it out. I'm going to be partying in there tonight, tagging stuff, leaving comments. Please leave some comments. I'm really enjoying that. Um, I guess I'm going to need to leave you guys with a question of the day. And the question of the day is this. What is your favorite wine to have when your server is crashing? Somebody recommended that in the comments. I saw that. I thought it was fantastic. I didn't catch the name. I'm sorry. Great, great question of the day. Um, also, RaiseTheHouse.com. Check that out. Eric Kastner, the man and brains behind Wine Library TV and the talent, is doing an extremely amazing thing. He's going to build a home in Alabama. And he, uh, he's only going to be able to do that by getting donations. Obviously, I definitely will be stepping up if any of the Vaniacs or Wine Library TV viewers right now who are watching believe in a great cause of building homes for people in need. And, and Eric's using his vacation time to go there. I know I'm going to get bashed for being a bad guy, give him an extra vacation. And we may if we ever figure out how to really do a live episode. That being said, RaiseTheHouse.com. I think Eric Kastner's there. You can pick him. Is that right, Eric? Under Donate Teams. Under Donate Teams, look for Eric Kastner. We'll put a link up, actually, on the uh, regular episode. He is a great guy, as is John Kay. I'm not going to leave you out of the equation, Mr. Kay. And uh, wine labels, please check them out. Leave a bunch. As a matter of fact, let's do something cool. Go to wine labels and go find, search for Togni and leave a comment under the Togni label about how you feel. How do you feel about the server crashing? How do you feel about the weekend? How do you feel about missing me for 10 days or glad I'm gone for 10 days? And how do you feel about the Colts? That's right, Dominus. The Colts stunning the Patriots this weekend. 17-16, please God. Other than that, I'm going to give one quick refresh on the comment section, see if I can answer any questions. And then I will be gone. I've got a couple of surprises for you while I'm gone. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to pour myself another glass of Philip Togni because it's rocking and the tannins were really firm and tight. I'd like to try it again. 267 comments. Maybe I'll stay here for a little while, see if we can break, break 300. Uh, did Eric build the site, Brandon M says? Eric? Didn't design it, but he did build it. Didn't design it, but he did, the, did, did, did build it. I did, I did design the buttons, though. He designed the buttons, though. Um, question day, something from Philip Togni would go well with a crash server, I think. Very well, Paul. Um, 
Live is gonna be so much better next time. We're gonna have the chat forum in there and then we could have done the whole thing. We practiced it yesterday with a bunch of people that test on the Wine Library TV forum. So you haven't signed in and joined the forum yet. You need to do that as well because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in there. I'm in there, not as much as I like to, but you know, Jay is holding it down and, and obviously Brandon and Tampa and SS and Italian Stallion and I'm now getting into a place where if I don't mention somebody they're gonna be mad and way and damn, sorry. Anyway, um, Mad Dog 2020, Banana Red for question of the day. I agree. Great, great choice. Bacardi Lone Moan, great choice. Guys, I will miss you with all of my heart. Please keep the comments coming. Please go to labels. I'm super on it. Leave some comments. Please do something. Tell somebody about Wine Library TV. Tell them about how we crashed and how much I suck. Because you, and I'm going to drink this. After today's performance, a little less of me. We're changing the wine world. I'll miss you.